morning session is Professor Hailong Dao from Kansas Univers University of Kansas, and the title is uh, Categorical Approaches to Singularities. So, please. Um, okay. Just want to make sure um, you can hear, everyone can hear me loud enough. Okay, so probably I should put this here. Um, well, so first of all, I would, somehow it doesn't seem to, um, first of all, I would thank the um, organizers uh, of the conference for this wonderful opportunity. Um, it was very inspiring to hear um, uh, about uh, the, the, the path, uh, um, the work, the transformational work by, uh, by Mel and Craig, but also to, to observe uh, the, the present and the future. It's great to see many um, wonderful young researchers here from all over the world. Um, so I, I think I would uh, start uh, with, with some um, uh, maybe uh, uh, non-mathematical uh, comments about, uh, about uh, 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 not just Mel and Craig and, oh, how do I? Ah, I will explain it, but I'm not, oh, okay. Okay, so what is CIA? <laughs> Community Algebra was GG. Yeah, great, or golden generation. So Community of Algebra has been blessed, uh, as we all know, with uh, with uh, <laughs> So Community of Algebra, uh, as we all know and appreciate, have been blessed with a uh, wonderful uh, um, pioneers, a uh, class of uh, people who are, uh, uh, who are great at everything, who, is a, who are a fantastic researcher, teacher, but also very good at community building. And I think it's one big part of our success nowadays. Um, unfortunately, many of them are going into retirement, already retired, and, and we even lost a couple of people uh, recently, like uh, Professor Goto. Um, so, I want to, uh, somehow, this thing just, is there a way to do it? Oh, okay, I can do it manually. Um, so, so, I want to, to, um, to take some minutes to talk about maybe uh, uh, a little bit about the, the, the future of the field, um, how, to, how to best to learn from what they did and uh, preserve the legacy um, the, that they have built. And here I'm just not talking about uh, uh, Mel and Craig, but of course uh, David, Lucho, um, uh, Keiichi, uh, and many other people, maybe a slightly younger, who are present in this, in this, uh, in this audience. Um, so what can we learn from them? Uh, so I want to, to highlight a few things. And, and many of these things, uh, I'm, I think, uh, very happy to report that uh, people are already, the new generation are already doing, but I do want to mention them so that we, um, we can uh, uh, all learn uh, from them together. So the first uh, thing uh, I, I think we can learn from, uh, from the people is, is uh, try to be brave. And it's not just about you know, trying to prove some big conjecture uh, or, or some uh, super uh, hard problem. Uh, everyone can, can be a little brave and try to go um, just a little out of our comfort zones. In fact, uh, the project that I'm going to describe to you uh, next will be something like that. So, so we can all, it doesn't have to be something big, but we can all try to uh, push the boundary a little bit of what we know, uh, learn something new. Uh, and uh, uh, being brave also, I think, uh, very beneficial to the field to uh, make conjecture. I used to joke that you should make conjecture when you're young because you have no reputation to lose. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, uh, it, uh, it can help the field to make conjecture. So don't be shy to advertise what you think is interesting. Um, 
the, the next lesson I think we can all learn from um, uh, uh, these people, uh, this generation is, is be broad. And I think that's uh, very important for the future of the field as well. So one thing uh, is quite interesting when you look at the, is the history, um, you, you don't know what will become very popular, right? And so um, if you look at uh, Stanley Risner theory, which uh, Mel didn't even write out, <laughs> he didn't even publish in it, but it become now such an industry, right? I mean, it's, it's spun uh, thousands of, of, of papers and hundreds of, uh, of wonderful careers. Uh, matrix factorization, um, you know, uh, I think uh, when, 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 when David wrote it, I don't think he has application in mathematical physics in mind, but it turned out to be the, the most uh, cited number of his paper come from mass physics. Um, symbolic powers, again, uh, something that uh, I think Craig uh, worked on in, uh, very early in the 70s. Now such a, uh, have seen such an explosion of activities. So you never know what will become popular. So, so be broad, you know, try to, to broaden your horizon. You will never know um, uh, what may become uh, uh, great 50 years from now. Um, yeah, and it's, it's always good to communicate with the wider community, uh, uh, not just in our field, but uh, of mathematicians, how interesting and, and friendly we are. Um, whenever I travel, I, I, I've been told by people from outside that uh, we actually have a reputation for being one of the very nice community. I think that's a great advantage, um, and we, we should try to keep that, and not, again, uh, not shy in advertising that. Uh, and be on to make new connection to other areas of mathematics. Uh, I guess I already um, uh, uh, touched on that, but, but uh, I think community of algebra and uh, maybe many young people didn't realize it, but it, it, uh, we actually have a great advantage because it's easily connected to many other areas of mathematics, whether it's algebraic geometry or combinatorics rigs or algebraic topology. Uh, uh, you've seen some of that in, in, the, in the talks. Okay, and the last, uh, well, the third thing I think David mentioned it yesterday is uh, uh, one lucky thing we had uh, for, from the, the top people um, in the field is that they are very nice, and so we should keep doing that. Be nice to, especially to young people. I guess you should be kind to, uh, to old people too, but... Um, <laughs> They, uh, you know, in some sense, they can take care of themselves better. Um, you know, mathematics is competitive, it's, it's, it's hard, and I think young people need a lot of support. Um, oh, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, don't, uh, if you're a senior, um, generally share a good idea, question, career advice. Actually, career advice are very good for young people. I think uh, a lot of people don't get enough career advices from there from the, sometime from the advisors. Uh, be social, you know, uh, try to talk to people. Um, um, yeah, you know, be nice to people even though um, they may not uh, understand what you say, um, or even if they uh, forget to cite your papers, or uh, their advisor hit you, you know, <laughs> still be nice to them. <laughs> Uh, in the end, the future of the field is bigger than anyone, any personal feeling. Uh, and if you're young, don't be shy about approaching senior people. Go talk to them. Um, many senior people may seem, they, uh, you may think that they are very busy and don't have time for you, but uh, I think most of the time they are lonely and can't wait to hear about your new theorems. <laughs> Just don't overdo it. All right, so, uh, and then I guess work hard. Yes, this is uh, uh, the talk should have a, 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 a photo, and uh, this is actually the only photo of both uh, well, Craig and Mel and uh, Ray Hyman. Hi, I was a fourth in this, and I've been uh, feeling very lucky to be able to 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 um, uh, uh, develop my career in contact with um, this gentleman. <clears throat> so anyway, let me switch now to. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to turn this off or something. Uh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 
So let me switch now to the math, and today I want to talk to you about um, Pythagorean's approach to, to singularity. Um, and we're trying to make this, uh, perhaps this is uh, somewhat um, uh, a new topic to, to um, quite a few people in this, in this audience, so um, I'll go slowly, so, uh, oops. So the first part is on the background, and the second part will be on some new uh, work uh, on subfuncture of x, and uh, what we call uh, Ulrich split, uh, split ring. And these are uh, joined with uh, <coughs> the new uh, result and joined with uh, Mona Lisa data and uh, Suvik. Um, both are, are graduates. Well, Suvik is, is um, going for a postdoc in, in, in uh, Prague. Um, both are fantastic students that, that um, did most of the work in, in here. Uh, but I want to uh, talk about some background first, so singularities. <coughs> ah using too much force. Um, so uh, the, the talk is about uh, categorical approaches to singularity. So first let me uh, remind you of what uh, singularities are. And of course, this is something that the uh, commutative algebra is uh, very uh, familiar. So uh, we've learned since graduate school uh, this uh, hierarchy of, uh, of, of uh, uh, of a singularity, so we have hyper uh, regular ring, and then hyper surface, which are regular ring mod R1, non zero divisor, uh, and then you have complete insection, uh, uh, Gorenstein, uh, Cohen Macaulay, right? Um, and uh, these are uh, things that we are all very familiar with. Perhaps slightly less familiar, but uh, you've seen it in some of the talk, uh, are the singularities that arrive from the minimum model program. And that leaves just uh, related, but quite different in nature. Um, so you have things like rational, uh, uh, canonical, uh, terminal, uh, lock version of this and so on. Um, Dubois, as you saw in the talk of uh, of, um, of Matteo, and uh, uh, you've seen uh, I guess uh, lock terminal singularity, or uh, in the in the, in the talk by uh, Professor Sato. <clears throat> so we want to solve this. Characteristic P singularity, which is very much the Hoxter Hunicky uh, 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 style of mathematics that uh, that we've seen a lot. So um, this this uh, singularity defined in characteristic P that use tight closure technique. So we have something like F rational, uh, F regular, F pure. F injective, and the list go on and on, <coughs> um, still being added as we as we speak. Um, and the amazing thing is that uh, over the course of uh, many years, uh, the work of many uh, fantastic people, we have this. Uh, we now establish fairly tight connection between the. This two class of singularity, um, you know, like uh, of course, Mel and Craig play a part, but uh, Karen Smith and the Japanese school of uh, commutative algebra, um, many other people, right? So, that's, um, so this is a huge. So this connection has been a huge part of 
community of algebra uh, that are related to algebraic geometry. By the way, if, uh, please uh, stop me uh, anytime if you uh, have a question. So categories, um, and these are just, uh, uh, for this talk, uh, uh, categories are, are not very technical. Um, we just, uh, it's more like a philosophy, right? So in category theory, we, we look at a category which is usually uh, consists of uh, a set of objects. And then we have the uh, set of morphism, so maps between objects. Plus some axiom. Uh, and the focus really about trying to, to understand the map between objects. So the objects themselves may not be that important, but the, the, the map between them are the, the, the really uh, uh, what make it interesting. And uh, for, exa for example, you uh, probably have seen uh, this, right? So the, the definition of projective module uh, is, uh, you know, it, whenever you have an M and you have a uh, subjection from N to M, then you can always uh, leap it to a, uh, um, to a map uh, from P to N so that the projective object. <clears throat> so this is, you can define it for module, but the point is that once you have the definition, you need nothing, you don't you need to talk about module, you just need to talk about, you know, letter and arrows, right? And that, uh, the, I think, uh, the, the, the power of category theory. Okay, so the, uh, the goal uh, of, uh, of uh, this uh, part of my uh, research is, is to, uh, and of course uh, other people, but um, is um, to establish uh, connection between uh, singularities, well, nice singularity, uh, perhaps this uh, appear on the left hand side to uh, to a nice property of uh, related categories. Right. <clears throat> and you know, this uh, in this talk, I will, I will mostly uh, focus on subcategory of mod R. Um, of course, uh, you can play this game with a lot more fancy and technical subjects such as that. You saw it in Tony's talk, uh, uh, the derived category uh, uh, can uh, uh, happen to a lot this, uh, nowadays. Um, and perhaps after this talk, you can go back and watch Tony's talk and get more appreciation for what he's doing. Um, uh, these are a lot more technical, but for subtext category mod R, I, lo I love it because it uh, retains a sort of the sort of innocent and, and naive uh, a, a feature, right? Because it's very concrete. You just talk about module, and I want to convince you that it's still interesting enough, and uh, perhaps there's a lot of uh, of work to do. So I will. Uh, I was. Uh, Start with a very simple warm up, um, warm up question, or warm up uh, perhaps uh, resolve, which is the uh, simplest case possible. So, uh, R M K is a local ring, and I'm going to assume that the dimension of R is zero. So it's Athenian case, and so we we're going to try to. Um, uh, start with this uh, uh, familiar, uh, we're going to try to um, take this familiar hierarchy of singularity and try to uh, put some categor categorical spins on it, on them, right? So, so how do you describe regular ring, uh, you know, regular local ring of uh, dimension zero? Well, of course, that just means that 
I is, uh, is a field, right? And uh, studying module category of, uh, of I is just studying linear algebra, which is actually quite a big <laughs> subject. <laughs> but the key thing is that, uh, of course, all um, finally generated, well, all modules are, uh, all finally generated modules are, are free, so they are direct sum of K. I mean, of course, in this case, you also equal to projective. Sometimes I prefer to use this because it's uh, work in the also non-local setting, and, and uh, projective is more uh, easily described categorically. But it makes no difference, of course. But it's good to keep that in mind. So hyperservice. Anyone know? Gorenstein. So, okay. Um, so regular is obvious. Um, the rest of the list is not so obvious. Uh, and of course, there are no unique answer either. Um, uh, uh, the, maybe the easiest one is called Macaulay, right? So, of course, everything is called Macaulay in dimension zero. Um, how about Gorenstein? So one way to describe Gorenstein ring uh, is to uh, require that all modules are, are reflexive, right? And so re a reflexive module is a subcategory of, of mod R, and, uh, and uh, if, they are, uh, if they coincide, uh, in this case, then it's precisely that uh, I is Gorenstein. How about hypersurface? Can you, dis how can you distinguish? Uh, uh, Gorenstein ring from this guy. So, um, of course, there are no unique way to to uh, describe it, but uh, you can describe high, uh, abstract hypersurface dimension zero as ring over it, uh, any module uh, is uh, self-dual, right? Or equivalently, every reflexive module is self-dual. I guess this is, I should say. Right. So, so Gorenstein, everything in a mod, uh, is reflexive. Hypersurface equivalent to any, anything in mod R, not just reflexive, but self-dual. Of course, if it's self-dual, then it's reflexive, right? Because if M is isomorphic to M dual, then it's... I think it's a, it's a cute characterization of hypersurface that maybe you have not seen before. Uh, it's uh, easy to do. Now, I don't know uh, a good characterization in this case, complete in section. Um, of course, like uh, David mentioned yesterday, you can uh, you can uh, say that the uh, uh, the you know the the, the uh, Betty number over of k has uh, polynomial growth. And that's a perfectly uh, a fine and, and uh, interesting characterization, but it doesn't have the same feel as this. It's more homological. Um, so uh, there's no, of course, uh, strict definition of what it means by category, but I hope by this uh, example you will you get a feel for, for it. Any question at this point? Any question? Okay. So Craig was begging for question, and he never got any. Um, okay, so now let's uh, let's look at uh, dimension in any dimension. Uh, 
Um, and so that's really, we have some uh, amazing uh, triumph over the year. Of course, the first uh, uh, theorem is that if R is regular, uh, then it's equivalent to the uh, positive dimension of anything is less than or equal to D. Uh, and so, of course, you, know, you can write in a way that will become more uh, relevant later that uh, the category of DCG of, uh, of mod R is free or projective, if you like. Uh, this is a classical theorem by also in the books by Amser. Uh, and then um, we have the results that say that by uh, uh, Bukhshvai and uh, uh, Karl and uh, other people, uh, I think it's built over the work of many years, but uh, so this uh, AD singularity, um, so this is a hypersurface of AD, AD type equations. Of course, are equivalent to, and here you will need some assumptions. So, you know, um, this result are, are sometimes need extra assumptions. So, yeah, for the sake of time, I will um, sometimes forget them. But, um, please uh, accept my apology. Um, even only if the uh, it is uh, uh, Gorenstein normal. Uh, plus the, the category CMR has finite type. Okay, uh, finitely here just means that there are only finitely many indecomposable in objects. Right. All right, so this is a very classical, uh, very classical. Now, um, let me move on. So, so maybe. Uh, this is something that you may not have seen so much. Uh, so, if R has a two dimension uh, rational singularity, the definition of rational singularity is uh, something like this if you have a uh, 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 y over x uh, is a resolution of singularity, so you want to, uh, uh, so x in x has rational, I just write it here to sort of give you some reference, it's not going to be um, if uh, the uh, direct uh, uh, forward, uh, Right, so the um, higher direct image functor vanish at the point x for all higher i. So um, again, all of this singularity here, you, uh, when you um, of the minimum model program, uh, you have to use resolution of singularity. Define them. Now, but now I want to give you a very commutative algebra. It's very uh, actually simple uh, characterization of rational singularity, and that is the following. Um, So, uh, I guess here I should say as normal. And uh, uh, you have to assume the, the fewest characteristic zero, I think. But um, anyway, um, so uh, one way to categorically dis, uh, 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 define rational singularity is to say that the category of uh, third CSG of any module. Is, uh, is finite type. Uh, this is a work, this is uh, again, uh, 
result of work by many people, uh, uh, Atin, Vedia, um, Unram, uh, Eno, Vivek, and uh, uh, Yama, Wims, uh, Yama and Wims, perhaps the last people who put a definite uh, <coughs> Uh, result in, in t uh, on paper, but it is built on work by many people. Um, perhaps even start with uh, Liebman, where he proved that uh, the class group is finite, uh, is a characterization of rational singularity. And in fact, you can, uh, for dimension at least uh, bigger than three, you can show. Uh, in a joint work with uh, Yama, uh, Takahashi, and uh, Vya, uh, that uh, if, uh, if C and mod R is a finite, finite type for any n bigger than or equal to D, then uh, R has rational singularity. Um, I need, uh, sorry. Yeah. No. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, you will get a sense that, that um, these things are quite. Uh, Interesting and and um, yeah, well, yeah. The other one is just no, yeah. So um, singularity in high dimension are much more complicated. There's no such elegant. Oh, well, okay. Maybe there are. Uh, if you look, uh, you're willing to look at certain special subcategory. There actually might be, uh, but um, it's get very complicated in dimension three already. Uh, I think you can write down some sort of uh, a category that, that characterize uh, dimension three singularity. It will look a little technical and ad hoc. Um, yeah, so what, what, so I hope uh, uh, I convince you that this is something worth looking at, right? So the advantage of this approach is that it's uh, usually the result look very elegant and uh, I mean short, right? Also surprising, um, and uh, uh, it uh, it doesn't uh, at least on the face of it it doesn't uh, it doesn't refer to characteristic, right? So not uh, characteristic specific. So uh, you, you can, if you want, you're willing to use this to define singularity. You can easily use the definition um, uh, as. Uh, more functorial. Obviously, with the uh, Bourgeois category, you, you, you can uh, more easily uh, do things like uh, complete localized, you know, uh, cutting down hyperplane. And it has a lot of connection with other area. So that's some of the advantage. Um, the disadvantage is that uh, Sometimes it's not easy to prove um, such statements. Um, and of course, uh, as Mel himself has uh, pointed out, not uh, to me, but um, I, th I like the quote that he's, uh, he wrote uh, sometimes that, uh, and in the end, cognitive algebra is really about understanding equations. So in the end, if you want to study deeply, you need to somehow understand equations. And this may look a little um, far from that. Uh, and I, I think uh, a cost studying equation has, has a lot of advantages, much more concrete and much more. Um, you can do a lot more powerful um, things. Nevertheless, I think uh, because of the reason uh, that I wrote down over there, I think it's worth pursuing, at least until we, we run out of, of things to do. Um, and there are a lot of things to do. Um, so let me... Uh, Fifteen minutes left. Right. L let me ex uh, describe you some results, some uh, recent results. Uh, 
Um, actually, the one uh, recent surprising result is, uh, is uh, on the topic of app rings, which is a very classical uh, classical object study by well, Aff and um, Zaresky, uh, Lipman, uh, uh, many others. So here, R uh, is a uh, local uh, coin Macaulay of dimension one. Uh, and I would assume the ring is uh, infinite to make it simple. Um, and so the definition of our ring is that, uh, but due to Lipman, <coughs> oh, I guess I need to uh, analytically unramify uh, to be safe here. Uh, probably you don't need, but. Um, so if y over z and x over z, uh, sorry, y over x and z over x uh, belong to the um, integral closure, then uh, y z over x uh, is in uh, r. Um, equivalently, so this one is concrete, but uh, maybe a little strange. Equivalent, you can say it more uh, every every integral integral close close uh, m primary ideal uh, is stable, namely have reduction uh, number one. So I, I is equal to I square for minimal reduction, right? Uh, so the theorem that I uh, have recently is that in dimension one, up rings are precisely the um, uh, the analog of the Gorenstein uh, property in uh, sorry. The, uh, the hypersurface property in, uh, well, not precise because not everything is not, well, okay, we will see. <coughs> so the following are equivalent. R is off. And any reflexive uh, M is self-dual. Um, so, one part of the <coughs> um, so it looks very similar to the hypersurface case there. Uh, of course, uh, one class of uh, up rings are hypersurface of multiplicity two, uh, but uh, um, we have a very pleasant uh, characterization. And in fact, for up ring, so in the complete case, when R is complete, uh, yeah, furthermore, if R is complete, um, I can describe all reflexive module. So reflexive, in the composite, in the composable reflexive module, uh, just one to one with uh, infinitely what the uh, near points of uh, R. So what are this? Uh, so this are the local ring obtained from repeatedly blow up the uh, Jacobson radical. Local ring from repeated repeated blow ups of um, of uh, Jacobson radical. Uh, every time you blow up the Jacobson radical, um, you get a semi-local ring, right? But you know, in the complete case, so it's, it decomposes as a product of local ring. Each of them will correspond to a decomposable reflexive module. Over. 
So it, it ultimately uh, uh, related to a resolution of singularity. Because in dimension one, if you just repeatedly blow up the Jacobson radical, you get to the, to the uh, uh, integral closure. So that these are all sort of inter intermediate uh, singularity between, between R and the resolution. Uh, and it leads to, uh, so this leads to some uh, uh, question about the connection between R singularity and rational singularity. Um, and and uh, Janos Kola told me that actually they, they are true, but um, I will, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the rational singularity, uh, oh, right. Sorry, I should say one more thing that also another corollary of this uh, is that uh, uh, the category of uh, reflexive module, which is also, in this case, CAG of CMR, has finite type. So offering may be considered as a, a analog of, of rational singularity in dimension one. Okay, so I have about 10 minutes uh, left. I will try to describe uh, my work with uh, um, most recent work with uh, Morileza and, and so, Sovic. <clears throat> So part two is um, uh, subfunctor of X and, and Ulrich split rings. Uh, so of course, let me uh, remind you of what uh, Ulrich modules uh, mean. Uh, so this is uh, for this. I also assume that the uh, sorry uh, the field is infinite, <coughs> and M. A maximum of Macaulay module over R is Ulrich if uh, the number of generators of M is equal to the uh, multiplicity with respect to the maximum ideal. Uh, of course, equivalently, this has a very concrete description, namely that for uh, some uh, system of parameters, this is just isomorphic to a bunch of direct sum of residue few. Okay. Uh, that's the only place I need yeah, infinite few. So the, this has been tr uh, a tremendous uh, subject of uh, study. Of course, Bern uh, uh, started it, and he called it um, maximally uh, generated maximum Quinn Macaulay module. Ulrich, uh, or maximally generated maximal Cohen Macaulay module, which uh, proves this uh, lemma that, that if you want something named after you, you give it a terrible first name. <laughs> right? And <laughs> maybe I should call this uh, MGMCM speed rings. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, so there has been tremendous. Uh, uh, body of work on Ulrich uh, modules and shifts and vector bundles, and it has uh, many, many wonderful applications. Unfortunately, I don't have time to even mention any of it, so let's just, uh, but you can easily read it from many uh, sources. Um, so, uh, people have studied, uh, so for example, uh, so let uh, U of R, uh, the Category Ulrich module, and uh, people have studied things like finite, finite representation type of uh, of, uh, uh, of of this uh, subcategory, um, uh, both on algebraic and geometric setting. However, I want to um, the the motivation for our project come from the following. Um, so when is uh, every sort of exact sequence in, uh, in uh, the category of Ulrich module split. Uh, 
Okay. Um, that's our, that's our um, starting uh, uh, motivation. And uh, well, uh, again, if you come from uh, representation theory, um, you know, many of this idea from, from this uh, area come from representation theory because there's also people who don't have commutivity, so they focus a lot on categories. Right? So instead of, because of lack of commutivity, you usually study ring by study module or functor uh, over ring. So uh, Oslander is a very, uh, it's a pioneer and in very strong uh, um, presence in that. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so uh, a category such as everything's um, an abelian category where every choice of sequence split is called semi simple, right? And that uh, uh, sort of the um, uh, motivation here. Now, this is not an abelian category, right? So, um, so technical, uh, technical uh, problem, but also things that are actually interesting uh, that uh, force us to do a bit more. Uh, is that uh, when you look at um, when you look at CM R or the subcortex of Ulrich, um, these are not uh, not a billion. Of course, they sit inside a billion category of mod R, but uh, if you take a map between two. Uh, Massimo Kramikoli modules, the uh, kernel or co-kernel may not be Massimo Kramikoli, right? So that's a serious problem. So you, you can't really, uh, you can't really uh, um, use a theory of homological algebra that, that develop for a billion category, right? So can can use <coughs> homological for a billion category. That's one of the one of the issue, um, and so maybe let me just move here. So let me just give uh, you the main result, um, and then uh, I will say a few words about uh, what go into the proof. Um, but let me just show you the, the main result. Um, So it's just theorem uh, by D D S. Um, so if R uh, M K uh, local Kohemakoli dimension equal to D. Oh, we say that. Okay, we say that. We say that R is uh, US if it's a uh, Ulrich uh, split. If every exact sequence in uh, all R splits right. So if D equal to zero, then any R, uh, any R is US, because there, uh, Ulrich module are just vector space, right? And so every short is a sequence of vector space uh, split. So things start to get uh, interesting in dimension uh, higher. In dimension one, um, you, uh, uh, if and only if the blow up of the maximum ideal is regular. It's not very surprising uh, for people who know um, because the set of Ulrich module are just, uh, well, also it still have to prove something, but so some compatibility. Uh, but the set of Ulrich module are uh, basically Ulrich, uh, sorry, just uh, maximum quantum Macaulay module over the blow up of the maximum ideal. Something that uh, Ben pointed out a long time ago. When d equal to two, <coughs> and now things really, uh, again, as uh, things go, uh, so here I assume that r is complete, 
I have to start somewhere normal. Uh, yeah, and um, then, and also if the field is uh, characteristic zero, so actually, let's just do C. Um, and so, R is US, Ulrich split if and only if, um, R is a cyclic quotient singularity. And the number of indecomposable object in um, uh, the uh, 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 incomposable module is at most two. Um, uh, so example of this are, for example, uh, so are very, very nice suffering of of a uh, ring of two dimension, uh, and many more actually, but um, it's, it's uh, hard to give a complete uh, description. Um, I'm one minute over time, but, but, but like, I didn't have time to get to this part, but um, um, so in order to, to even t uh, talk about this uh, sensibly, um, we need to develop uh, uh, some sort of, uh, of uh, homological algebra over non-abelian category, as you can see here. Uh, we, we prove that, uh, so one of the technical points is that I want to study uh, sort of a sequence of Ulrich module, right? But if the two ends are Ulrich, so for quantum Macaulay module, if the two ends of a sequence are Massimo quantum Macaulay, then automatically you get the third one is quantum Macaulay. So just, you know, lifting this from the abelian category is fine, but for, for Ulrich module, you have to assume that the third one is Ulrich as well. And so you prove that uh, the collection of such exact sequence form some sub functor of the x, uh, the usual x between, and that's one of the points in the proof. Uh, and that uh, takes uh, 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 <laughs> one more paper to develop it. And uh, there we can um, uh, recover some of the results uh, by uh, Tony uh, and um, uh, Janet, I think, also have some in the thesis, uh, and, and we, we can give criterion for when uh, a collection of uh, exact sequence give you a subfunctor of X and use this subfunctor to detect regularity and all that. But that, um, I don't have time for, for more, so let's stop here. Thank you. So, any questions? Jones. Uh, I didn't have any question as such, but I just wanted to thank you for the first 10 minutes uh, of your talk. Um, as a new graduate student, I found it uh, very motivating, and I think I can speak for many of my colleagues as well. Um, so thank you. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. You are the, you are the future, so. I hope to see many of you uh, many more years to come around the world. Any questions or comments? Mark, you, you seem to. I think this is a very naive question, but can't you turn, for instance, I mean, uh, Eisenberg uh, matrix factorization or their term, uh, with, his term with, with PIVA about structure of a complete intersection into a categorical uh, characterization? I mean, sorry, Eisenberg and PIVA. Yeah, for uh, instance, I mean, structure. Oh, think you, that you mean the, like the, higher, the eventual behavior higher of matrix factorization? Yeah. Yes, but um, first of all, there's a no un uniform bound. So, you know, one of the things that I uh, write a lot, that you see a lot, is that somehow there's uh, this number. Uh, so when you take higher CG enough, then, then the category become nice, mm -hmm. right? So for rational singularity, if you take third CG, anything, it will be a direct sum of finally many incomposable that you know how to describe. Now, the, the category of uh, matrix factorization for complete section, um, yes, so you take any high CG, you get uh, this special metric factorization that uh, David and Arena described. Unfortunately, there's no uniform bound for when you need how many stuff you need. And in fact, you can prove that there's no. Hmm. So you cannot write like, you know, CG 1000 is 
okay. equivalent to, yeah, so that's a, that's a subtle. So for the hypersurface case, that's a uniform bound because of matrix factorization, D plus one is a bound, right? Yeah. But uh, no such theorem exists in complete inception. So any other questions? Yes. I, I think in general, uh, if we don't have, I mean, if the category is not abelian, how we talk about exactness? I mean, in general, it's <laughs> <laughs> that's a beautiful question, and that's exactly so. Uh, yes, uh, so so the uh, the uh, you have to, the keyword is uh, exact uh, category, <laughs> and it had a glorious story uh, starting from um, actually uh, you know books bomb. Um, uh, I wrote it as a name here somewhere. Many people have worked on it, uh, and in fact, uh, Quillen used uh, exact category to, um, uh, it's a fundamental tool to uh, define these higher, higher homotopy groups uh, that earn him the, the Fields Medal. Um, so, yeah, so the point is that it, uh, you don't have uh, a billion categories, so you, you describe your category with subjects, and then you describe all the exact sequence. So uh, the data given to you is uh, a bunch of objects and a bunch of strong exact sequence that satisfies certain axiom, right? So exact category come with basically, well, you don't even write the strong exact sequence, but they call it kernel, co kernel pair because you know, technically it, it, it you know, uh, on its own it may not have exact sequence, right? So to to, to say exact sequence, you have to have kernel, co kernel. <laughs> but anyway, so you can you can write out the axioms. Uh, and it take a, took a page actually to write down, but um, but that turned out to work in many cases. Uh, uh, so yeah, CMR uh, Ulrich uh, R is uh, exact category. It's not obvious, not obvious. You need to prove it. Uh, but once you have that exact category, then you can import some tools. Uh, so people have studied them, and they have some tool. But to to translate into um, to an efficient version, you, you you need to do some extra work as well. So people have very general theorem about when this becomes subfunctor, but it's hard to 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 um, to check. So we prove a couple of results that say uh, give very concrete numerical condition for when become subfunctors. Thank you. Any other questions? So, oh, okay. So if this category is not abelian, uh -huh. is it possible that it's triangulated? I mean. Ah, 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 that's another good question. Uh, so no, so this is between, in between. Um, if you look, for example, if you look at, uh, if R is Gorenstein, and you look at the stable category, then it's a triangulated category. And it's a closely related, but not quite the same. But, but exact category is the, is the right keyword here. So, so if there is no question anymore, then let's thank the speaker again.